In this video, we'll be walking through an example of finding the area of a surface of revolution in polar form. Let's say we have the polar equation r equals sine of theta, and that's shown right here. It's kind of sitting on this polar axis. And we'll say that it's revolved about the polar axis. So this is the polar axis, what we kind of think of as the x-axis, as opposed to the line theta equals pi over 2, that would be what we think of as the y-axis in the Cartesian coordinate. But this is the the uh, polar coordinate system. So we have this this graph here and it's revolved about the polar axis. It's kind of coming out of the screen there at you. It makes this donut when it's revolved around. We call the donut a torus. Now we want to find just the surface area, not the volume, but just the, the area around that. Now we have two different uh, integrals for for finding the, the surface of revolution and it depends on whether or not we're revolving it about the polar axis or revolving the graph about the line theta equals pi over 2. Well we are about the polar axis so let's take a look at this formula. This is the integral that gives us the surface of revolution. Uh, the only thing different if it's revolved about the y-axis by the way is just this um, the sine of theta turns to cosine of theta. Everything else is the same. But that would, of course, change your answer. So let's take a look at it. We want to uh, find a surface area of this donut, of this torus. So we need to start plugging some stuff in here. Very important here. Alpha and beta. Those have to be the limits of integration for just tracing this graph just once. Because in polar coordinates, sometimes from 0 to 2 pi, it might tra um, trace it twice. And in fact, with this graph, it does. This graph, this circle, is graphed with over just the interval 0 to pi. So those will be our limits of integration, 0 and pi. Okay, That's probably the trickiest part of this. Everything else is just plugging right in there. Okay, I'll write down uh, the formula with everything plugged in. Now that everything is plugged in, we see 2 pi times the integral from 0 to pi of sine of theta, that's r, is sine of theta, times sine of theta, that's already in this formula, and then r squared, so sine squared of theta, and then plus cosine squared, because the integral of, I'm sorry, the derivative of sine of theta is cosine of theta. So we square that, so we get cosine squared of theta. So that's where everything goes in there. Notice the radical is there in its proper place. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1, so the square root of 1 is just 1, so all of this is just 1. Excellent. So we have sine squared of theta. Now, let's rewrite that real quickly. Sine squared of theta equals 1 half of 1 minus cosine of 2 theta. So I'm going to put that here and I'm going to bring the, the 1 half out, multiply it out here. So 2 times 1 half is just 1. So we'll just have a pi out here. So let's rewrite that and we'll get s equals pi times the integral from 0 to pi of 1 minus cosine of 2 theta d theta. Now, the integral of that then is, we'll have the pi out here, times theta minus 1 half sine of 2 theta. evaluated from 0 to pi, and that equals, we've got pi out here, multiplied by pi minus 0 minus 0 minus 0. So in the end, what we have, shifting back to green for our initial problem here, that is an area of surface of revolution of pi squared.